Hey guys, today I'm gonna cut this guy into a couple pieces for 3D print, so I thought I'd make a quick video. So, select it on the subtool that you want to cut apart. Uh, we're gonna do some masking. And you could use the mask lasso tool if uh, you had like a really complex shape or something like that. But I'm gonna use the rectangle tool and just do a straight cut. So I wanna cut his head off. Right about here. Zoom in and take a look at that cut. Looks pretty good. Maybe I should do it in a little bit closer where we have more room in between one of these pods, like right here. Yeah, I think I like that better. Yeah, I think I like that better as a cut. So we just want to make sure we didn't select anything else, rotate around it. It looks like I may have gotten some of the foot here. So I'm going to control alt drag to unselect that. And it doesn't look like I got anything else, but just to be sure, I can click on move and just drag this back. I just wanted to make sure no other um, polygons like from the feet or anything are getting left behind and it all looks good there. So I can just undo that move. And I think that looks like a good cut. So once you have your cut selected, then we just need to split it off. So we're going to come into the subtool palette and look for split. And then split masked points will cut off what you just masked. Takes a minute. And now you can see you got two different subtools. I have a subtool, and if you hover over your subtool, it'll show you the little preview. I have just the body with the tail left and the head. So now I'm going to cut off the tail. I'm going to hide the base real quick. I think probably right here. Or right here maybe. I think right here is probably perfect. Good amount of space in between those two. Blood pods on his back. And it looks like I need to pick up a little bit more here. That looks like a nice clean cut. So once I have my cut selected, I'm going to do the same exact thing. And under split, split masked points. And let's let ZBrush cut that apart. Now if I click solo, you can see better what's going on. So the next step is to just close the holes up. So that's going to be under the geometry tab. And we're looking for modify topology and close holes. So just click close holes. And that will close up the holes for you. Now. My printer doesn't tend to mind these little jagged edges. I have a Sonic Mighty 8K and it doesn't really 
tend to mind that type of stuff but if you have jagged edges left that you want to repair you can come in here with a very small draw size and just kind of clear up those jagged edges a little bit again like I said my printer doesn't seem to mind it it just prints and and if there's a little bit of jaggedness there I can just sand it off it actually give, it tends to give me less of a seam if I just leave it like this so there's that piece and then let's look at the next one we'll take a look at the head and let's do a close holes on that so again we're gonna go down to geometry modify topology close holes back to our sub tool let's take a look at the tail and just do the same thing again geometry modify topology close holes so the next step is adding some keys and uh, could go ahead and show you how to do that right now um, I guess I won't add all the keys I'll just do one and so the, for the sake of this length of the video um, so let's look let's look at the body and what we want to do is make a key that comes out of the body and cuts into the tail comes out of the neck and cuts into the or comes out of the body part and cuts into the neck so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unsolo this so I can see the other sub tools but I'm gonna hide some of these I'm gonna hide everything but the body right now and then I'm going to append uh, another shape that we can use as a key. You could use anything. You could use a cylinder. You could use a, um, a cone. I wouldn't recommend it. What I would recommend is the cube. So let's append a cube and then let's click on our cube and let's just rename it key. And let's scale the key down in size. So it's more of a good size for the key. Let's zoom in a little bit here. And you just want to make sure that it is overlapping in the mesh. Because you this is going to want to be a piece of this one. You're going to want to merge them as one. And so this will be the key that comes out of here. Now we need the piece that's going to dig the hole into the tail. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate that. And... Uh, on this new key, I'll rename it and we'll call it key hole. Actually, sorry, I skipped a step. I'm going to delete that and go back one. First, I want to taper this. So I'm going to right click. Oh, sorry, uh, I got to get into my gizmo and then click this little uh, gear. It'll bring us into this transform um, menu and just click taper. These little triangles will allow you to taper in or out. So let's taper in. That'll help it be a nice shape for a key. And then just click this gear again to accept it. And now we have a nice shape for a key. So now at this point, we're going to duplicate it. And we'll rename that key hole. And so what I'm going to do is just scale the key hole up a little bit. And then I like to pull it down just to make sure that it is bigger. Maybe a little bit bigger than that. Let's zoom in so you can see what's going on. Yeah, that looks like a good size. Maybe slightly smaller. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, let's go with that and I also would sometimes like to just pull it down a little nudge just to give it a little bit more space you don't have to do that though okay so now what we want to do is uh, 
subtract this keyhole that we made from the tail. So let's move the keyhole up under the tail since that's what we're going to be subtracting it from. And I'm going to uh, hide the body and I'm going to show the tail. So the two subtools that I'm looking at now are the keyhole and the tail. Again, we're trying to subtract this from the tail. So I'm going to click this little icon right here, which is like minus front. It will subtract this shape from this shape. And then we do, all we need to do is click Live Boolean. And you can see it's there, but at this point it's still live. So you can kind of move it around and position it where you want it. I think that's a good spot. I'm just going to leave it where it is. Um, but you can see it's actually not uh, like a final piece of mesh because it's still live. So what we need to do now is a boolean and that's under your subtool menu as well, boolean. Make boolean mesh. And this is going to take just a minute, especially if you got a good amount of polys. telling you up here that it's union remeshing is in progress you can click escape to cancel and it looks like it's done so one thing that used to confuse me in the beginning was that I don't see it in here and that can be a little bit confusing but not to worry it's up here now so all you need to do is append and there it is you mesh bloodsucker let's click that so we're gonna have that down here so now we can get rid of this tail which was the original one we can just delete it and we can get rid of the keyhole as well and now let's rename that new piece let's rename it Bloodsucker Dragon Tail. So we've got the tail there. And let's see, let's I'm gonna duplicate this key so I have another one to work with and hide it. But then I'm gonna move this key up under the um this is the body. So let's look at just those two for a second. The key and the bloodsucker body and hide the tail. So I want to make this a piece of this. So all I'm going to do is just grab the, let's rename this, bloodsucker dragon body. And I'm just going to merge it down under the merge menu. Merge down. Hit OK. So now this is one tool. So like if we go on solo and go back and forth from the tail to the body, you can see we have the two pieces that we need. So that's basically all that you need to do. Um, once you have, so I would repeat this process up here um, for the, um, the the neck I would just copy this key that I duplicated put it up here then duplicate it again make it a little bit larger and live boolean it out of the head and then um, do the make uh, pro boolean mesh and then append it and delete the old subtools so it's basically the same process over and over again um, so I hope that explains how to cut apart and key a model. I just did the same thing down here, except I used a cylinder. So that cylinder will be, oh, I didn't do that one yet. Okay, so I'll do the same exact thing where I'll just make the cylinder a little bit larger and then, um, you know, uh, live boolean the cylinder from the tail.
Uh, I had done that one in a in an earlier version, I guess, but uh, I'll have to redo it for this one. So, all right, if you guys liked this video, um, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and uh, let me know that you like these and you want more coming. See you guys.